Too bad today's video isn't sponsored by Crucial because we're gonna be talking about how crucial DDR RAM is to your system, but how much fury you can feel if you overspend on that. Although that's not a Crucial brand, but you get it. Dad jokes and puns aside, today we're gonna to talk about DDR5, very fast speeds versus base speeds on gaming PCs and whether or not you're just throwing money away by getting really fast RAM. The ViewSonic X24K LED projector is the world's first projector designed for Xbox consoles. Featuring screen sizes up to 120 inches, native refresh rates up to 240 hertz, built-in Harman Kardon speakers, and low latency gaming modes, the X24K gaming projector from ViewSonic delivers a truly customizable experience for both gaming and HDR cinema. To see our full length video covering features and user experiences, follow the links in the description below. It's not a new topic. It's a topic that tends to come up all the time, especially as RAM sort of progresses. I've, I've done this topic on DDR3, DDR4, and we're doing it now in DDR5. And I already said in the intro, we're talking about for gaming PCs, specifically gaming PCs, whether or not having very fast RAM gives you any sort of benefit compared to slower RAM. So what we did, uh, well, what I did anyway for the comparisons is I compared 7200 megahertz, 32 gigabyte uh, sets of RAM, versus base clock speeds at 4800. So if you guys don't know, base clocks, DDR5 JDEC specifications are 4800 megahertz CL40 versus 7200 megahertz at CL34. But we also threw in their 6400 megahertz RAM at CL38. So what you're gonna see right here are a couple of different things compared to sort of get like a slow, medium, and fast. Now one thing to point out too is the fact that RAM pricing is all over the place. And this video is not specifically talking about the capacity of RAM and how that affects your gaming. The capacity of RAM should have no impact on your gaming whatsoever unless your graphics card's RAM is so low in terms of GDD GDDR RAM available to the graphics chip that it's doing swap all the time with the system RAM. Then you're gonna notice terrible performance because system RAM is significantly slower than the RAM that you find on your graphics card and not to mention that interface between graphics card going through the PCI all the way through the chipset into the RAM and then back to the graphics card is extremely slow. Um, but you can see right here, prices are all over the place. 7,200 megahertz dims can cost you as much as three or $400, although they've started coming down a bit because now they're up to like what, 8,400? megahertz RAM, which isn't even guaranteed to run on your CPU, by the way. It's probably most guaranteed to run on an Intel CPU. AMD is still a bit picky when it comes to RAM speeds, even things that are Expo, but um, it is an overclock because the printed speeds on your RAM are not the speeds that are gonna load when you put it in your system and turn it on. You've gotta go in and enable either the XMP profile, the DOCP profile for the Ryzen processors that are older than, than uh, AM5, or on the AM5 processors, what they refer to now as an AMD Expo uh, profiles. But you can see pricing here is $230 for a 5200 megahertz dim on that Fury, that's, that's a complete ripoff. But you can find RAM also extremely cheap, as much as like 100 bucks for 32 gigabytes of like slower RAM, like 5200 megahertz or whatever. But RAM pricing is all over the place, which is why people get extremely confused. They're like, why is this one $5 more? This one's $20 more and it's slower. It's just stuff is all over the place. So what I did was I took what I consider to be a, a high-end GPU, but not so high-end that we're gonna bottleneck everything. So I took a 4080 Super. Yeah, I know that's that's, Almost a 4090, but not quite. To be honest, I just 4090s are so unobtainium for most people at that point. It's not even worth talking about, even though the 4080 Super is still pretty unobtainium for most people. And I ran it through our a few of our benchmarks, both synthetics as well as tracked benchmarks, to see whether or not we get any sort of uplift in performance in either 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. So let's go ahead and get started with some of our synthetics. So 3D Mark, Port Royal is a, um, it's a, a benchmarking tool that's designed specifically for like GPU drag racing. I mean, sure, it gives you a number, but it, it's basically just about comparing one GPU to another, comparing overclocks, and it's extremely efficient. What I mean by that is it's not loading, it's not waiting on the CPU to have to really do much. The entire process is, is stored entirely in RAM to make it as fast as possible. So the CPU is pretty much doing nothing during this test. And that's pretty obvious that it's not, uh, the RAM is having no effect on the performance either. As you can see, we've got the 7200 megahertz RAM on the top at 18676, the, 40, the 4800 in the middle at 18598, and then the 6400 
in the uh, bottom at 18.545. Now, all three of these scores are actually margin of error because when you start dealing with very fast graphics cards, very, not so much in Port Royal and Time Spy, but as the frame rates get really high, even though it's stored entirely in system RAM, background tasks can have a huge effect on some of these, these numbers. So I could have ran this test 10 times and probably gotten three or different orders of all three cards all 10 times because they're so close uh, in this type of test. I mean, the difference between 18676 and 18545 would be absolutely impossible to determine when watching the test. I mean, we're talking down to the tenths of a frame per second average change that is giving these score differences. If we move over to a Time Spy Extreme, which is just a rasterization test, there's no, poor, uh, there's no RT in there. You can see once again, we've got, which is really weird. And you're gonna see this trend as we go forward here. The 7200's on top at 14,730. 4800 megahertz is in the middle at 14,714. So we're talking 16 points difference between these two. And then 300 points lower, almost 300 points, is the 6400. But one thing I wanna point out before we move on to these tests, cause you're gonna notice some weird anomalies here, is the fact that the 6400 megahertz RAM is being uh, run by our T-Force, Team Group T-Force RGB RAM. This is a CL38, I believe. Yes, it's a CL38. So it's running 6400 megahertz at CL38, which is the timing, versus our Trident Z5 7200 megahertz uh, kit for the 7200 and the 4800. So we took the max speed on this one, ran the test, and then we dropped it to base clocks for the JDEX specifications, which is 4800 megahertz at CL40 um, for the rest of the test. So the 6400, keep in mind, is the team group, where I guess technically if we should have, we should have just run this in the middle setting. We wanted to compare it to our normal benchmarking hardware that we use to see how much does timing really take effect because the Trident is CL34. And these are CL38. So now you're kind of seeing where memory timings can start to really sort of play in versus the actual um, memory, like max speed itself. But it's important to keep in mind though, at the 4800, it's at CL40, not CL34. So if we run 4800 CL34, we probably would have seen it be even farther ahead. But anyway, this, this 14,486 versus the 14,714, um, again, there's a, my rate of things that it could have been to give that sort of a, a differential. And the thing is about synthetic benchmarks, they're intended to show how little things can give big effects in the numbers. That's part of the reason why it's like a drag racing tool. But if we start moving into actual gaming and we look at resolutions, this is what we get. And I don't know why this is the case, but the RTX 4080 Super at 4,800 megahertz stock speeds on the Trident was fastest in 1080p by five FPS, like a, a significant margin, which is really odd. The fact that at 4800 uh, or the 4080 at 7200 was five FPS slower. If you look at our 1080, our, our 1440p numbers though, margin of error, two FPS, that's like not even 1%, that's barely 1% of, of what's well, actually just barely over 1% of the overall score. A million different things that could be. That could be Windows background updates might have checked. Is there an update? That little check could have affected that. But if we look at 4K, entirely untouched. The 4800 or the 4080 at 6400, 257, a significant difference right there. And this right here between these two could quite honestly be the CL34 versus CL38, to be honest. But if we look at our 1440p numbers, again, 191 versus 194, three FPS, and then 103 and 4K. So slightly slower overall on the team group RAM, which I thought was interesting. But Borderlands is also a very heavily AMD optimized title. NVIDIA has definitely gotten faster at it, but it's, it's always been weird on NVIDIA titles. If we move on to Cyberpunk, no RT. The 4080 at 6400 megahertz was our fastest 1080p at 204. But if we look at our 1440p and our 4K numbers, they're actually slower than the 7200 megahertz RAM at 126 and 58. Cyberpunk is another strange title. Um, it's, we can run the test five times in a row and get five different variants in one or two FPS performance changes. It's just the way that title is. It's frustrating, but it is just the way it is. And then you can see down here our 4,800 megahertz, um, one FPS better in 1440 versus 7,200, and then exactly the same in 4K. But you can see a couple of FPS improvement when it comes to the 7200 here. Can't explain why the 6400 beat it with slower timings, or I should say looser timings, but it is what it is. But as soon as you turn on RT, 
Now we're GPU bound, right? We're very GPU bound because the GPU is having to do all the all that um, that post processing, which means the CPU is not trying to deal with. 200 frames per second, it's dealing with half that at 103 frames per second. 103, 103, and 102. Again, the 4800 on top, margin of error. This is 100% margin of error here. 65 versus 66 and 1440, 32, 32, and then 31 down here in 4K at the bottom. 64 versus 66 and 65. 102, 103, 103. So all three of those tests are a wash. It's just margin of error. Whatever one process in the background might have triggered and started in the middle of this test um, is probably what led to these couple of differences. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is an interesting one to look at here because it actually shows a proper linear change with frequency. And it's fun because it's an older title. And it's an older title that has actually increased its engine limits over time. Very rarely do game developers ever increase the engine capacity. It used to be 200 FPS. Now it's th over 300, as you can see. <clears throat> but our 4080 Super was 7200 megahertz at 308 FPS. We saw an improvement of 10 FPS versus the 6400. Probably, again, the timings as well as the just super fast transfer rates. Um, and then in 1080p down here, all the way down to 287 for the 4800. And if we look, we see that same linear improvement in 1440p, 248, 257, 261. Then in 4K, we see it doesn't matter because we're not waiting on the CPU at all there. So you're seeing now in games that are achievable of very high frame rates is where you might start to see some measurable difference in RAM speed versus um, resolution at that point. So as the resolution gets higher and there's more load on the GPU and it's more GPU bound, the less benefit to having faster RAM is gonna be. We turn on ray tracing, exact same story, as you can see. Although at 1440p, it's pretty much a wash, 189, 188, 188, because again, GPU bound. RT is on, much lower frame rates, but you can see the 7200 pulled out quite ahead, 255 versus 246. Again, no one is gonna notice that with their eyeballs, period. You are gonna notice that with your wallet though and the difference of price between the RAM. And then even the slowest 4800 megahertz RAM is running 239 and 1080p. But look at the 4K and 1440p numbers. Absolutely dead even. Moving on to Forza, which is my last title here. Um, you can see once again, a nominal improvement of 7200 megahertz RAM over the 4800, uh, the same RAM kit at base JDX speeds. 1440p is a, is a dead heat. 4K exactly the same. Same thing moving on here with the 6400 and slightly slower timing or, ti or looser timings at CL38. 197, 178, and 136, so exactly the same. So that's where we kind of stopped the testing because we, we had our patterns really start to, to show there. And this is not to say fast RAM is not beneficial to you. It's just, if we're talking specifically in the discussion of gaming, it comes entirely down to multiple factors. One, what resolution are you running? If you're running 1440p or higher, it is very unlikely that you are gonna notice any sort of performance difference with 7200 megahertz or higher versus base clock speeds of DDR5 at 4800. Now DDR5 is significantly faster than DDR4. If we did these tests again with DDR4, you might notice a little bit more of an improvement of the faster DDR4 speeds as we go up the stack in a faster graphics card because of just the DDR5 base clocks are so fast versus DDR4. Maybe we'll do this test again if you want me to with DDR4. Sound off in the comments below. Maybe we'll try and make that one even more exaggerated by putting like a 4090 that's overclocked on like a Ryzen CPU or an Intel 12th gen or something with DDR4 and see what happens there. Um, this is also a 13900K, I forgot to mention at the start of this video. So it's already a very fast multi-threaded CPU that is running AI overclock as well. Um, if you are doing multiple things with your system, if you are doing like any sort of video editing or uh, photo editing and such, you might find that capacity is more important to you than speed of the RAM. Because unless you're doing tasks that are stored entirely in the RAM, where having how fast that data can be swapped out of the RAM is more important than how much data the RAM has to hold, then faster RAM speeds at lower capacity might be important to you. You might, have, you might say, okay, I'm dealing with something that is, this program is very notorious for needing fast RAM, go with 32 gigabytes of 7200 or 7400 or something. But if you're dealing with high amounts of data that's stored in RAM for editing purposes, it might make more sense to go with 64 gigabytes of RAM and drop it down to like 6,000 megahertz because the capacity at that point is more important than the transfer speed. But when it comes to gaming, 
This is not, this is the same story being retold over and over and over. Fast RAM is very difficult to even notice without it being in a chart form, unless you're dealing with like lower resolutions like 1080p with very fast graphics cards, which are already a terrible value proposition to go with low resolution and high-end graphics, unless you're again, running a very specific type of game that needs those super ridiculous frame rates. Um, that there's, that's such a niche group versus the general consumer that that's not even worth going into as, as a reason why I would ever pair a 4090 with a 1080p monitor or something stupid like that, and then pairing it with very fast RAM. But that's the only time you're gonna notice any sort of difference. So my recommendation to you would honestly be save the money. If we go back to like Newegg or something here, let's just see, cause I'm curious now, what kind of deals we can find on RAM. If we look up DDR5, and again, this is very specific to DDR5 uh, for this particular test. I'll do DDR4 if you guys wanna see it. If we look at 32 gigabyte capacities, which is quite honestly, the most common kit you're gonna find because um, DDR5 16 gigabyte DIMMs are like the standard, right? Finding eight gigabyte DIMMs are actually harder than finding 16 gigabyte DIMMs. So if we look now at, um, I don't know, if we just sort by price, lowest price, um, here's Team Group Vul Vulcan, 32 gigabytes, $5,687.99. That would be a great set of RAM to put in your system that's cost effective, fast enough that you're never gonna notice a difference, enough capacity to where you could still do video editing, photo editing and such and have 32 gigabytes available to you. You're just not getting the, the RGB aspect or anything to it, which I think most people are truly not gonna care about. But if you did want RGB, spend $2 more and here it is right here, the T-Force Delta, which has RGB, it's 5,600, and still 32 gigabytes of RAM. So the point is, you could easily, easily overspend. You could probably overspend enough on your RAM that the price difference of going to more reasonable RAM might actually bump your CPU up one spec, maybe from like a 13400F to like a 13600K, which would be arguably a bigger improvement in your system overall than going with fast RAM. The old days of I'm upgrading my memory and my system so I can have a faster system are long gone unless you are somehow running so far below the standard, like, like let's say you're running eight gigabytes of system RAM, then you're gonna have bigger problems in gaming at that point. Your whole system is probably gonna feel sluggish on that. Um, but yeah, the, the, old, the old adage of, I added RAM to my system to make it faster is really not a thing anymore. So don't overspend on your RAM and don't let these RAM companies that put out 82 different kits with varying prices between 80 bucks to $800 fool you. Don't overspend on your RAM. It's the easiest place to waste money. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Like I said, if you want me to do the DDR video comparison so you can see how that looks, which might have a little bit more tangible difference because of the slower speeds of DDR4, then we'll do that. Just sound off down below, give this video a like and subscribe if you're new around here. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.